I said, uh, Brian, uh, do you have to teach or do you have to preach tomorrow? And he says, Mom, I get to preach tomorrow. Uh -huh. Oh, and I said, Oh, and I've been thinking about that even with teaching Sunday school that I get to teach, and so it's it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing because it gives me the the um, the energy and the, the to really dig into the scriptures. I may read the lesson and whatever, but as I was saying, there's a difference between reading the lesson, studying the lesson, and then preparing to teach the lesson. <laughs> that goes into a whole different level, and and uh, my slight ADD sometimes takes me on rabbit <laughs> walks or rabbit runs all all over all over the place. But uh, thank you, thank you, Steve, and and all you do. Um, did nobody is here from the family mission trip? Uh, Tara and I know Laura uh, Boggs uh, both went on it. Uh, all the reports I heard from it were just absolutely wonderful. And they had 40 to 50 uh, children from the area there. Every, even on the 4th of July, they had uh, over 40 children to show up. Uh, and uh, so that was, that was exciting. And uh, everything just went really well. Uh, next week, next week is uh, an important, important week. Uh, next week, I put, yeah, uh, next week we're uh, going to have coffee and goodies. So uh, the Oranas brought, uh, went ahead and brought some goodies today, so be oh, sure to nice. get some before you walk out. But next week we'll have coffee and goodies for everybody. And then next week is going to be two special things happening next week. Coffee and goodies, and then baby Adeline, Adeline, Adel Adeline, excuse me, uh, is going to be uh, dedicated in church. And so, uh, and so, you know, when they ask family and friends oh, to yes. stand up, let's a whole class uh, stand up for that because this is going to be a really special thing. And of course, as you heard uh, two Sundays ago, uh, 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 Foley has, has made the, the decision to follow Jesus truly. Uh, and so that is, that is great. I'm not sure when he's going to be baptized, but, uh, but it will be soon. So anyway, that's exciting. Then on the 28th, uh, we're going to have a, just a, a serendipity, uh, Leo. Um, Tommy and I went to Sita. Do you know Sita's last name? I don't know Sita's last name. Anyway, she is a member of our church and has run the, a Thai restaurant here in Jonesboro. And now she is doing one, uh, has opened one. Uh, right near South Lake Mall, across from Harley Davidson, across the, from Harley Davidson, it's called Mama Cita's Thai uh, Thai Garden, or Mama Cita's Thai Restaurant. Anyway, a lot of people from our church go there, and so we thought, well, after church, if you want to just show up, uh, I'll just get us a table, and we could just put tables together. I know the choir goes there after church on Sunday. I mean, a lot of people from the choir. And so uh, a lot of people go there. It's it's the freshest Thai that we've ever had. We she just does a wonderful job, and this is her, her nice new uh, restaurant, and it's so clean and so pristine. And she has food other than Thai food. What? Whose restaurant is it? It's her restaurant. It, her name is Sita. S I D A. And she goes to this church. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sorry. Do what? Where is the restaurant? It's, you know where Harley Davidson is at the mall? In Morrow. Uh, yes. Okay, it's. It's what? It's Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's crossing the, but, uh, but we have been there, and, uh, and so I think on Sunday, I mean, you can order from the menu, but they also have a buffet, and uh, so anyway, we just thought we'd, whoever wanted to show up. But have y'all picked out a date in August? Um, the 17th, would that work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 17th, would that work, Tommy? <laughs> I'm going to wear my birthday crown this two days out. <laughs> <laughs> but I celebrate all that. Uh, July 19th. Okay. So, 
Ask Tommy, ask Tommy when his birthday is. What's your birthday, Tommy? Yeah, I know people that do the week. Huh? What's your birthday? Tommy's birthday's the 17th. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, it's going. <laughs> 17. <laughs> okay, uh, and one other, one other announcement before we get started. On uh, next Sunday, also, also... Is not only coffee, it's not only the dedication, but it's also that night is the one service. And what they're asking everybody to do who comes to the one service is to bring your favorite ice cream, not to Sunday school, <laughs> but bring it right before uh, the service. And they'll collect it right before the service and that service that night. Okay, anything else? What? Um, student missions start tomorrow. They're going to South Carolina. Oh. So pray for all the students that are going to see my baby is going. They just leave the states without me. Yes. It's his first time and his first mission. So Yes. Oh. How wonderful. That's wonderful. Tara, you want to just say one word about the family mission trip? Yeah, just say one word. Okay. It was great. <laughs> it was really, really just, I think I was blessed more than the <laughs> kids. But we had a Goodness, 40 from our church who went, and then, oh, my, maybe 40 kids um, that showed up at the beginning. They were a little shy. By the end of the week, they were dancing on the stage. <laughs> we had a, our church. It's amazing um, just to see how our church, it, it's all about us reaching out in the community here. So Monday night was a big fair at a, at a um, fairground or baseball field, whatever. Our tents popped up with little games, and then we had prizes to give away when we get to there. Um, but, you know, we just pray that the, the seed of the gospel was planted in their hearts. Um, our older kids who went did a drama to the Casting Crown song set me free, and it was, it, it was very powerful. So, um, it is. It is. Where were y'all? Um, Morgan Field, Kentucky. I'm a Western. West, no, Eastern. No, no, no. All I know is we went up through Nashville and down in Omaha. So oh, you have a lot of Okay, that is more Western. Okay. Some line area. Okay. All right. Well, we, uh, we are wanting to start. And uh, let me just tell you this is the prayer list. Attached to the prayer list, I have redone the. Uh, I will let our roll. Would you check it one more time to make sure I have the latest information about you? And uh, and if you are not on there, if you will put your name on there and fill it out, just write it down at the bottom or the top or somewhere. So uh, so as the prayer list goes around, check this, okay? And who does not have a handout? Uh, okay. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's some in the back. Okay. Let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we start. Our blessed Heavenly Father, how we praise you and thank you. Thank you so much for this gathering of uh, of wonderful people. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, how you are planting in our hearts to uh, reach out to others, how you're planting in our heart your eternity, Heavenly Father, how you're planting in our heart, Heavenly Father, uh, your love and kindness so that we can not just share it with those around us, but that we can go and share it with the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that went on the mission trip, uh, family mission trip, and and what it is. Uh, and we just pray, Heavenly Father, that it will have repercussions uh, for years afterwards. Heavenly Father, we pray for the children of the youth mission, the trip, 
Uh, and Heavenly Father, we just pray for uh, safety for our kids. We pray, Heavenly Father, for health for them. But even more than that, Heavenly Father, we pray that as they go, they not only will experience the love of Jesus uh, in their own lives, but will be able to share that with, uh, with those that they go to minister to. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this for this day. Thank you so much for your word. My goodness, we do praise you for uh, showing us a, a little bit of who you are through your word. And Heavenly Father, as we open it today, we ask that you will uh, guide us in our thoughts and our minds and that it will make a difference. It will make a difference in our lives. Holy Spirit, I just pray that, that you will come and speak not only through me, but speak straight into the hearts of each person here. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, as you see, we have a, have a new uh, study that we've started. Is there anybody that does not have a book? Anybody that does not have a book? Um, okay, okay, the two of them. Okay, we've got one more that we will sell cheap. Oh, no. <laughs> so, but we'll get a new one. Uh, we'll get a new one in September. We'll get, oh, and the prayer list, let's start this prayer list, and you'll check to see if your name and everything's right. Okay, as you see, the lesson is about as it is in heaven. Where in the world do I get that phrase? Let me just ask you, what are some phrases that that maybe uh, are about heaven that you've heard? You know, some what some phrases that people say about heaven. heaven. What? Heaven help us. Heaven help us. Yes, absolutely. What's something else? In heaven's name. He for heaven's sake. <laughs> In heaven's name. In heaven's name. Heaven. Heaven sent. Heaven sent. Somebody, a, like a baby. Heaven sent. Yes, yes. Anything else uh, that you can think of? More examples of common phrases that we use. Heaven help us. Uh, uh, heaven knows. Huh? Heaven knows. Heaven help us, we said. Heaven. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Yes, that's a good one. Yes, heaven forbid. Or have you ever heard... We're going to move heaven and earth to get this done. <laughs> and uh, Or even a match made in heaven. Have you heard that? Have you heard that one? Well, today, and, and you know, there were many, many TV shows about uh, and movies about heaven can wait or, uh, yes, yes, all these. Uh, and so people have naturally sort of been interested in heaven. But uh, how many people want to go to heaven? Anybody? Any? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, I see a few people that are not listening. I'm listening. <laughs> Surely you want to go to heaven. Uh, now, you don't have to answer this. How many people are anxious to get there? <laughs> don't <they? laughs> Yeah. So, so uh, I heard somebody say, all the people that talk about heaven are not ready to go there. <laughs> and uh, and I heard the story of this lady, actually in Los Angeles, who uh, was very sick, and her church people came. Uh, she was in the hospital. Her church people came around and prayed and prayed that she would be restored, and she was. And a few months later, the same thing happened again. And her church people came and they prayed and prayed, and she was restored. Uh, a couple of years later, the same thing happened. And the church people came around and she said, Listen, would you stop praying that I, <laughs> I will live? I want to go to heaven, and you are preventing me from going. <laughs> Don't pray. <laughs> so anyway, she was, she was one that, that wanted to go. And not only wanted to go, she wanted to go then. She wanted to go then. However, this study is not about how to get to heaven. It's not. Uh, it's uh, and it's a uh, and, and it's not about necessarily about what heaven means. But it talks about the difference heaven can make here on earth in our everyday walking around life right now. Right now, 
Our author describes it, and you can write it on your, your paper. Our author describes, oh, well, let me, let me ask you this. Turn to Matthew 6.10 in your Bible. Everybody, Matthew 6.10. Anybody know what that's going to be about? Well, I can read it. The Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer Actually, it was the model prayer because of the the uh, disciples asked the Lord, "How uh, teach us how to pray like you pray? How you when you pray, you know, heaven and earth moves. Yeah. Teach us how to pray like you pray." And then this is what Jesus said: "This then is how you should pray." But look at uh, verse ten. Look at verse ten. It says, "Your now." This is what we're to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. What's the next phrase? As it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you think that means? Hmm. Do you know, really, can I be truth? I had not, you know, I'm, Memorized the Lord's Prayer when I was maybe seven years old, you know. And back then, in the olden days, uh, I had classes. I mean, in, in my some of my classes, we would say the Lord's Prayer every day. You know, it was not that we knew what it was talking about. <laughs> we had memorized it, and we just spouted it out. Uh, and so, uh, but it had never, you know, I, I understood about give us this day our daily bread. I understood about uh, forgive us our trespasses. I understood about forgiving others. I understood about not being uh, in temptation. Uh, I understood all of that. But I had never really thought about, I, I really never thought about God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I really never thought about that. Had, had any of you? Yeah. What, what did you? Maybe it's like uh, you know the golden rule because up there they're already in heaven. It's God's will, and down here it's up to us what we do. But it's best if we follow the golden rule and do unto others. Okay. It's already happening that way. It, yes. Okay, Joy. Well, um, I we're gonna praise God in heaven a lot. I mean. Well, we try to praise him on earth. Do we praise him on earth? Um, I think, I mean, the choir and, yeah. I think Is that the only way no, we praise him? No, that's him. not the only way. Okay. That's the first thing that came the to The first thing, mind. yeah, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> okay, but, um, so what is God's will in heaven? What is it? How, how will we emulate God's will in heaven? How will we emulate that here on earth? How uh, our author describes life on earth as uh, uh, graduated from the the from the stroller and the, graduated to the pouch. <laughs> We've already announced about next week. <laughs> okay, but our author describes life as the before life. <laughs> And that's life on earth. <laughs> Here and now. And the afterlife. And that's life in heaven. Okay. So, uh, that's the way our author, our author, author uh, describes it. Now, uh, what do you think? Tell me some things about the before life here on earth. Tell me just some things. Good, bad, and different, whatever. Just shout out a word. We have to deal with the world. Okay. In so we are dealing <laughs> Okay, dealing with the world. I just put it. Okay, what are some other things in the book in time in where we are right now. Me focus, self focus. Uh, self focus. A lot of learning. What's that? A lot of learning. Focus. Okay. 
Right. Learning, right. and that can be good and and uh and hard. Sickness. What? Sickness. 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 We do have to do deal with sickness. Sinful. Sinful. Sin. Says so more plus every morning the sun comes up. I mean, he's thankful for the sunrise. Okay, we can be. That's right. It's not all bad, is it? <laughs> okay, it can. We can be thankful. There are certainly good things that love. happen. Love. What? Love. Flag. Love. 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 <laughs> love. Love. love that certainly love. What else is there? What is some fear? What? Fear. Fear? Yeah. Fear about children going off with joy. Joy. <laughs> joy. joy. But there's joy. <laughs> huh? I'm here. <laughs> blessings. Blessings. Uh, there are blessings, yes. So there's some good and some bad. Uh how does the Bible, uh, how, well, let me just ask you this. How do most people think about life now, their life on earth, their, their, their life now? How do you think, I'm not talking about Christians necessarily. What? They think it's going to last a long time. They think it's going to last a long time. That's, that's, well, I've, I've heard, um, well, as long as I'm here, I'm going to have the best time I can. As long as I'm here, as as I'm here. I'm gonna have the best time I can and live life, oh, live life yeah. to the fullest. Yeah, living in the moment. Uh, for the moment, yeah. enjoy myself, a full of pleasure, pack in as much pleasure as I can. Okay, but what does the Bible say about before life? Who has Psalm 103, 15 and 16? Oh, stand up and read it loud. <laughs> As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Ah, the wind passes over our life, and it is gone. Our days are numbered. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know the number, but it's, it's our days are numbered. Our days are numbered. What else? Uh, somebody has Psalm 39, 4 through 6. Read it loud. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom. As he goes to and fro, he bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. Yes. <laughs> yes. The Bible says that even though they're good things, it is short. It is short. What, Randy? I'm, I'm filling this thing out. Give me a chance to say, to me, one of the most irritating things in the world that I hear when somebody describes something as heaven on earth, if they say, ah, oh, this island and all that, that's heaven on earth. Well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and if you don't understand heaven, you say that. That's right. That's right. Bugs me for exactly. Time. Exactly. You know, that, that you don't understand. But, you know, and life is filled with good things. And, the before life is filled with good things. It's filled with bad things. It's filled with joy. It's filled with sorrow. It's filled with uh, love. It's filled with hate. It's filled with all of those things. Uh, but it is not heaven on earth. It is not heaven on earth. And it is short. <coughs> the before life is short. <coughs> As compared the afterlife, which is long, eternity. And we can't even describe how long eternity is because we have a, 
finite understanding of time. What? Um, I was talking to my nine-year-old grandson when we were swimming the other day, mm -hmm. and he was asking a ton of questions about, like, um, heaven, and then I asked him how to get there, and he's he asked me, well, Mimi, how, if I'm going to live forever, then what it, am I going to get bored? Because that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I had an answer for everything because we talked two hours. I said, well, you know, we can't understand everything, Logan, because it's so special for us that there will be things that you're going to be able to do forever, but we just don't understand them yet. Uh -huh. And he got it. Okay. But I, I really, that was really special. But is, you know, yeah. If we knew everything, if we knew all the mysteries of the Bible, even though the, God makes a lot of mysteries clear in the Bible, it, but if we knew everything, we would be God's. Yes. And folks, we ain't. We ain't. We ain't. <laughs> we ain't. Okay. This leads us to try to figure out if we are to have, uh, as it is in heaven, now, now, in this world, it leads us to figure out what is the purpose uh, in, our in our before life. Or as we said on the board here, am I just marking time? Am I just marking time until I pass away? What's the purpose right here? One of the most interesting books in the Bible that I don't particularly like, to tell you the truth, uh, because it's so cynical, is the book of Cle Ecclesiastes. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it just blows my mind that Solomon, in all of his wisdom, could be so cynical, could be so cynical. So uh, Solomon, who was the wisest, the richest, the uh, most powerful king that, that Israel ever saw, had, with all of his gifts, he too was beset with trying to find out what the meaning of life was. And uh, so turn to Ecclesiastes 2. Now Ecclesiastes comes right after uh, Proverbs. So turn to Ecclesiastes 2. And I want you just to read silently uh, 1 through 11. As Solomon tried to find out the meaning of life, what we were here for, and he knew there would be a period of time. There would be a time when he would die. So why was he here? Find out all the things he tried in order to find out the meaning of life. Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 11. <laughs> Listen, just just call it out as you find it. You can keep reading, but call out something. Well, he keeps talking about the eye himself. Yes. <laughs> but what did he try to find the meaning of life? How did he try to find it? In what? Built houses for himself. He uh, built built stuff. <laughs> He built all sorts of stuff. He, he built palaces. He built gardens. He built, you know, all these kinds of things. Projects, big projects. He, he did, did, yes. Built projects, big projects. He had servants. What? He had servants. He had many servants. He had, what does it say? Actually, just even in the first verse. What Pleasure yourself with pleasure, so he was... Yeah. He tried pleasure of every kind. What kind of pleasure did he try? A harem. A harem? So sex? Yeah. Well, verse, 10. <laughs> verse 10, it says, I did not know my heart from any pleasure. From any pleasure. That's right. 
So it says he's tried sex. He said he I tried cheering myself up with wine. He so he was drinking. Ah. Uh, uh, he he tried all sorts of work. He tried uh he amassed lots of money. Oh, silver and gold and everything. All sorts of money and servants and flocks and uh even had male and female singers. Uh huh. He met the Queen of Sheba, that's right. <laughs> and he said, everything, the delights of a man's heart. Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. He continued, he tried intellect. <coughs> uh, everything that he tried, he uh, work, hobbies, pleasure, sex, uh, learning, all this learning. Uh, look over in, uh, uh, look down in verse 11, and what did he determine in verse 11, the end part of verse 11? Everything was meaningless. He said, nothing filled that void of trying to find meaning. Then turn over to uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 11 in chapter 3. He said, uh, then he was talking about God. I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Isn't that interesting? He realized that there was something that as great and powerful and rich and all the things he had tried and uh, <coughs> that there was something that he was not in control of. He was not in control. He was not in control of what God had set in the human heart about being, having eternity. We can seek pleasure or we can seek God. And when we seek God, pleasure will be a difference in that there will be contentment. There will be a different kind of joy way down there will be a peace in our hearts that we have not understood. We said, which is longer, before life or after life, and, uh, but let me tell you this. If all of these things are not, don't, don't do anything, are meaningless, as, as, uh, as Solomon said, what? Why are we here? What is what what is why is this life right here so important? And it is important. Why is it important? To glorify God. To glorify God. To share. To build his herd. Build his <laughs> build his herd. I love it. Yeah. Build his group. To build. Share. Yes. Bring yes. Men. Okay, what? Well, from the beginning, we were made in the image of God. Yes. So we're here for a reason. We're we're here. Here. We didn't have that purpose years before. Absolutely, absolutely. And our author is saying that this before life, he uses is a warm-up. <laughs> a warm-up for the afterlife. It's a warm-up. It's a before. Uh, how we use this before life is most important to God. It's most important to God. Uh, let's see if we can see some clues about the afterlife uh, as it is in heaven life from the Bible. Uh, way back in 740 B.C., 
Now, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Not just Revelation. Way back in 740 uh, B.C., Isaiah, Isaiah had, uh, the prophet Isaiah had a glimpse of what it was and of what it was like. Did, did I give that verse to anybody? Okay, let me just read what Isaiah said. Okay, not yet. Uh, Isaiah said in chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 1 through 3, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, that was 740 B.C., I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on, a seated, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him was seraphim with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, listen carefully, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. That was a glimpse of heaven way back. It was just not more recent. It was way back that even Isaiah had just a glimpse of heaven. Now, we know that the apostle John had more than a glimpse of heaven. When he was exiled to the uh, Isle of Patmos, we were, uh, he was in this sort of cave-like situation uh, on the Isle of Patmos. And as he was worshiping, he was worshiping, he began to have a vision of, of heaven. And that was, of course, recorded in Revelations. So, uh, and so uh, the Apostle John had this incredible vision of life, of the afterlife, the life in heaven, what was going on there, and and gave us more in depth. Now, a lot of it, you know, I'm not a Revelation, uh, first of all, expert. I don't know that, that any, I know a lot of people teach and preach and so forth about Revelation, but really nobody knows. Let's just be truthful. You know, you can talk about the numerology, you can talk about you know, but there are some things that are perfectly clear in the book of Revelation. First of all, the first three chapters tell exactly uh, what's happening with churches and how, as a church, you know, we need to be. As this very clear, and then, uh, uh, then it, it gets into a little more, a uh, little more than that. So who, uh, so. As we look at Revelation in more depth than most, I want you to turn to Revelation 4, but listen while you turn there. Who is going to be in heaven? Who has uh, John 14, 6? Who is going to be in heaven? John 14, 6. Okay, stand up and read it loud, Barbara. And the reason I ask you, not only for people, but I, when I was watching uh, Steve and I was, and you know, you want to hear everything and sometimes you can't. So that's why I'm asking you to talk loud. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So who is going to be in heaven? Jesus. Believers, believe, uh, believers in Jesus as a Savior. As Lord and Savior. Many people want Jesus as a Savior. They just don't want him as a Lord. Um, okay, so that's the who is going to be there. How many are going to be there? Uh, now, Greg, I think you have the first revelation. Seven, nine. Just the first part. Who is going to, how many are going to be in heaven? After these things, I saw a great army of people, more than might be numbered, out of every nation. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it right. More, more than, than okay, more than can be numbered. So, multitudes. An infinite number of people. 
We don't know how many, but we know they're going to be lots. They're going to be lots because they've been lots of believers. All right. So where are these believers coming from? Now read the rest of that, Greg. Out of every nation and of all tribes and peoples and languages. All nations. Taking it, but you want the last That's okay. All nations, all tribes, all languages. What does that mean? All over the world. All over the world. Right now, uh, Baptist missionaries are going to unreached people groups. At the last uh, Southern Baptist Convention, they um, they commissioned something like 84, 80 something uh, missionaries to go into places, and they would give their testimony. But there were some. And all those, most of those, were young couples who were going to unreached people groups. Even so much so that some of their testimonies had to be read and they could not show their faces. They could not show their faces because where they were going was so dangerous. All of those young couples that chose, nobody asked them, that chose to go to all these unreached people groups, chose to go knowing that they may be buried in those countries. They may be buried in those countries. But they chose anyway to go into all those unreached people groups. Now, Lanny's telling us that sometimes in the 2030s that every people group on earth will have had the opportunity to hear about Jesus. And what the Bible says, that once that's happened, eternity comes. The Lord comes again. So that's a very interesting, that's a very interesting idea. But where will they be from? All nations, all nations. What will they be doing? What will they be doing in heaven? Look at Revelations 4, 1 through 11. And as it says, uh, and, and let me just read, that, that as it begins in, in verse 1, Paul, I mean, John was looking and seeing things he had certainly never seen before. And there was a door, uh, a opening, an opening in heaven, and a voice he heard speaking to him like a trumpet. Come up, come up here. I will show you what must take place after this. And at once he was in the spirit, meaning that the Holy Spirit had begun to take over everything in him and begin to show him what was in, in heaven. He saw a throne. He saw uh, someone on the throne that had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like emerald encircling. He saw... Uh, Around the throne, there were 24 th other thrones, which is interesting. And seated on them were 24 elders. Now, that's differences of opinion as to who those elders were. Some people think they represented the t uh, 12 tribes of Israel and represented the 12 apostles. Other people think that they uh, actually represent all believers that have come, that before Jesus and after Jesus, that they represented that. But uh, but uh, they were dressed in white, and they had crowns of gold. Crowns of gold. We don't exactly know what that means, but it could be uh, whether they were martyred, whether they, uh, what, what they, uh, how they lived their lives, how they lived their lives. And it's talked about flashes of lightning and thunder, meaning the majesty of, of God. And, uh, and then there were seven lamps that signifies the Holy Spirit and seven spirits that also signifies the Holy Spirit. And then it was these four creatures which signified the attributes of God. And uh, and then it was then those living creatures that had six wings. Isaiah saw this 740 years before, you know, before this ever 
You know, it was not, and, and something similar in Ezekiel and Daniel and that, those kinds of things. So it's not just came out of the blue, but they saw it too. And then it says, day and night, they never stopped saying, what did they say? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Wow. And then it talked about the living creatures and, and giving honor. And then the 24 elders fall down and take off their crowns. Everything that had been done in the name of Jesus was put at the feet of Jesus. And they said, you are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Wow, you were created. You were created, uh, and by his will you were created. Now, very quickly, let me, let me do this. What else does the Bible, so what does that say is going on in heaven, God's will in heaven? What does that say is happening? Worshiping. Worshiping, yes. We don't know what kind of, we don't know worship, Joy, <laughs> compared to this. I know it. But. Well, and I know that there's colors there yes. that we don't have. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's right. We can't see. As an artist, I think about that's well, exactly there's right. colors there that I don't even know about. That's exactly <laughs> right. I can paint that's something really good. good. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Okay, we are worshiping. We are glorifying. I don't want y'all to go before. Uh, is that an eye? Well, maybe, go both ways. Maybe. Uh -huh. It seems there's a select few that's worshiping the existence of creation of all the rest of the many. So not everybody saying holy, holy, holy. Oh, I think so. Uh, wait just so a minute, Connie. Holy, holy. Connie, hold on just a minute. Okay, just a minute. Let me just tell <laughs> these people that need to leave what else is coming. Uh, we are worshiping and, and, uh, and what we're saying is Jesus said in that model prayer, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Revere God. God is holy. God is honored. God is adored in unending worship. So if that's God's will in heaven, what is his will on earth? It's the same thing, that we are praising and glorifying God here as well. So here at the end of your at the end of your so what does that mean here on earth? Right here at the end, this is what I want you to write down real quickly. Okay, in line number one, I want you to write down marriage. If you're married, if you're not married, write down relationships with others. Number two, I want you to write down career or your work ethic or even retirement. Number two, <laughs> wherever you are, career, your work ethic, or your retirement. Number three, write down leisure time. Write down, number four, write down speech. Write down what? Speech. Oh. Number five. Write down worship in our church. <laughs> and the next one, and then there are more than this. The next one, thoughts. My thoughts. 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 My thinking. And this is what I want you to do and think about do does my marriage or my relationships with others does it bring God glory wow circle one through five does my marriage or my relationships to others does it bring God glory which is man that takes it 
makes it five is the best and one is the least. Yes, thank you. Does my career or work ethic bring God glory? One to five. Does my leisure time, or that could be retirement too, does my leisure time bring God glory? Does my speech bring God glory? What comes out of my mouth? Does it help people? Does it encourage people? Does it lift people up? Does it bring God glory? Does my worship here at church, as I go into the church, now I can worship with the music, I can worship with the word, I can worship as I, as I greet people, I can worship with my tithe, I can worship in many ways in that church, but am I worshiping? Y'all, I've, I've had to do, God put it, I really think, my, on my mind to do this, but then I had to take the, uh, take the test too. And, and so these are some things, some of them are in the book, but I added some things. And do my thoughts bring God glory? Whoa. Questions I must ask myself, if I'm honest, is, is it truly possible to bring God glory in all that I do? How can I do all of this? I'm just human. I'm just human. How can I do all of this? Hey, folks, we can't. Let's just get, we can't do it. We can't do it. But we can focus on Jesus. We can focus on Jesus and let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts, work on us. Remember Paul's powerful confession and admission when he wanted to do all of these things and wanted that thorn in his flesh, whatever it was, to be taken away. And then God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you and for my power is made perfect in your weakness. His power is made perfect. So it's not that we have to, oh, I've got to really work at this. I've got to do this. Got... The more we focus on Jesus, yeah. The more that Holy Spirit works in us to bring power, not our power, but God's power in our lives. God's power in our lives. Uh, he's the one that makes us strong. We must understand the reason we were created was not, listen carefully, was not to be a good person. The reason we were created was not to be a good husband or a good wife or a good parent. The reason we were created was not to be a good worker or a good a citizen. We were created to bring God glory. Bring God glory. That's who we were created for. That's who we were created for. We were created to bring God glory. When we let God work inside of us to bring him glory, all those other things fall into place. All those other places. It's not that we work those other things. The more we focus on Jesus and the more we let the Holy Spirit work in us, those things come like the fruit in, in John 15. As long as we attach to that vine, that fruit is going to be there. That fruit is going to come. And uh, when we do all those things, everything else will fall into place. Remember, life is a preparation for heaven. It's the warm-up. It's the warm-up. Live your before life as a warm-up to your afterlife as it is in heaven. Would you bow your heads? Holy Father, wow. You put a lot on my heart. Help us to re-examine our lives, Heavenly Father. Not just to be good people, but to focus on you and let you do the work inside of us. 
Heavenly Father, as we hallow your name, as we revere your name, as we look to you, you will do as it is in heaven. Father, thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives, even this next week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Don't forget, next Sunday, we're going to all, when they say uh, family and friends, we're going to all stand up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All of a sudden, I look in. Yeah. <laughs> she was passed right down. I know. I love it. <laughs> For you people online, uh, uh, Greg, come over here and stand in front of the camera. <laughs> Oh, okay. Look at this little girl. This is hey, Lynn. Look at this little girl. Hold and this on. is not the father. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Yeah. I have a niece. Don't anybody strange you look at her face. She was screaming. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I talked about the church. I oh, so cute. Oh, I had to take her out of the church because nobody can look at her face. Oh, really? Yeah. How are you? I'm good. She loved a bunch of Big girl, big girl, big girl. Well, you know, people said, as, as the child said, won't I be bored? No, we will no. not. No. Uh, it will be so incredible that there won't be a possibility. Absolutely. Of but he said, when he showed him this vision, he said, it was broken. He said, that when he was giving yes. his testimony, he was just crying. He said, oh, he said it broke me. He said, I'll never do the same. He said, my prayer for the church in this country is that we'll never lose the spirit. Okay. That's right. That's right. After what he showed us. That's what we need to go get her coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm, I'm better. Too bad. Yeah. Oh. At the coffee shop, is that nine o'clock? Did you guys? Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ten's better. Yeah.